Hello, I'm Richard Corns, Chief Executive of the British Council for Offices, the BCO, and welcome to the latest in our series of interviews we call The New Normal. Each week I talk to a prominent member of the BCO about the coronavirus pandemic and its impact on the office sector. Now this week's focus is on what we might call the market and I'm delighted to be able to tap the brains of Matt Oakley, Head of European Commercial Property Research at Savile. So welcome Matt. Thank you Richard, pleasure to be with you. Well thank you very much, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and for those who don't know, Matt has been at Savile since 1997, which astonishingly is even longer than I've been at the BCO. <laughs> and leads a team of research professionals covering all aspects of commercial property research throughout Europe. Before joining Savills, Matt was head of research at Drivers Jonas. But as I often say at this point, more important than any of that is Matt's connection with the BCO, and Matt is a member of our board of management, was the first member to chair our research committee, and is a regular contributor to the BCO's annual conference. So welcome again, Matt. I'm very grateful to you for spending some time with us. We'll go straight to questions, if I may. And first of all, how far, Matt, do you think the pandemic will affect the demand for office space? Well, that, that is undeniably the, um, the million dollar or even hundred million dollar question, Richard. Um, I, I'm trying to, to think about this in, in as sort of two separate questions. The first is the pandemic specific questions. And they, they, a lot of those fall into behavioral boxes. You know, the, how comfortable are people going to feel? Are they going to need to be forced back to work? Are they going to need to be encouraged to use public transport? Will they be obsessed about social distancing or not all those kind of things they're the imponderables we just don't know the answers um, the other box is 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 the one that probably plays to my strengths a bit better which is we're in a recession uh, we've had recessions before you know last time i when i started chairing the bca research committee i think we just got into a recession and, and there was no budget for research anyway um, so we're in a recession what happens to the office market in recessions uh, you know gdp growth goes negative demand for office space goes down tenants start to dump excess space supplier goes up rents fall and i think that is the easy bit to answer. So I think the pandemic has caused a recession. The recession will have relatively normal impacts on the office market in the UK. Again, sort of slightly different parameters. It's not as debt driven as it was in the GFC. Um, it may be slightly quicker or slightly slower. Personally, I'm, I'm more worried about a sort of the potential for a double dip actually um, in the UK. Uh, but maybe we can explore that as we go through the, the chat. That is interesting, Matt, the double dip, because there's been so much chat about, you know, the V-shaped recovery, mm. the U-shaped recovery and, and all the rest of it. But the double dip, clearly we are in a recession. It is going to be, it is going to be deep and, and severe. The question, of course, is how quickly we do or don't bounce back. And I'm sure we'll, we'll come to that a bit later, perhaps in a bit more detail. But I'd like to drill in now, if I may, to one element of the, of the office market, and that's the serviced office sector. And do you think that the effects of the coronavirus pandemic will be most marked in, in that sector, perhaps particularly because of the sort of the fear factor that you touched upon just a minute ago? I think, yes, it probably will be the most affected segment of the market, but possibly not because of the, the fear factor. I think it's just because of the length of lease, which gives you know, if you were of the school of thought that this is a relatively V-shaped economic shock, it's kind of difficult to get out of a five or 10 year lease, let's call it a five year lease, you wouldn't, probably wouldn't anyway, if you're taking a view that, you know, everything will be fine by Christmas. Um, however, if you've only got a one month lease, it's a lot easier to cancel it on a knee jerk and then say, well, look, I'll come back next year. And I think if you look at the industries that are are being most affected by this it, it goes in a sort of length of lease story so you know people who lease space by the hour 
people by the day, so airlines and hotels hit hardest first, and then next comes people who lease space by the month, which is generally the serviced office providers. I don't think they're going to be particularly damaged by the sort of occupational density question, because if you're worried about that, you'll just take more space in your serviced office and, and spread your staff out. Co-working was never a big part of their businesses anyway. But um, I think, you know, they, they're just going to feel the effects of a slowing economy sooner mm. uh, than the traditional landlords, uh, rather than being particularly damaged, I think, by those sort of virus-specific behavioural changes. No, there's a lot in that, and I see where you're coming from, because clearly the most flexible product is, is the one that is easiest to get rid of. So that's, you know, that, that's where you've got the choice and you've got levers, levers to pull. And let's sort of drill on for that, if I may, into the sort of the, the relationships more broadly between the landlord and the tenant. And how far, Matt, do you think the crisis will affect that relationship in the longer term? Well... I, I, I'm, I'm a bit curmudgeonly about this in the sense that, you know, there is, again, I can't remember, this is my third, third recession um, as, as, as a property uh, researcher. And um, every time we get to a point of the recession where people are predicting that there's going to be a dramatic change in how we lease space, and usually it's focused on retail and turnover rents. And then strangely it doesn't happen whether because landlords don't want it or tenants don't want it and I think that whole story not particularly relevant to offices has become more complicated by internet shopping and click and collect etc so I don't think there will be a dramatic change in how we lease space and I think you know I think you know what is interesting I think about this crisis is is how the, the landlords are generally getting the worst of the deal and I think you know it is it's uh, you know increasingly common situation where sort of tenants are demanding rent holidays um, rather than asking, and I think you know it, you can't really call it a, a relationship based on respect if if one side is demanding, um, and I suspect that they will then be demanding of their landlords that they do all kinds of sort of virus protection preventative measures but not put the service charge up. So I think, I think they're going to be strained. And obviously, you know, the big institutional uh, landlords will probably just shrug and, and work on the basis that over a 10-year period, they'll probably be fine and it's worth it for a good relationship. But I think the landlords had a pretty rough run. You know, an awful, a lot of the sort of measures introduced by the government have been supporting the tenant rather than... And the landlord is just seen as someone who has to suck it up. Um, but, you know, I work for a house that predominantly advises landlords, so maybe I would say that. Well, in, in, perhaps you would, but even so, I think you've got a very good point there, Matt, because I agree. There is, there is this sort of perception that, that, you know, landlords have, you know, bottomless pockets and, and it doesn't really matter, which is obviously one untrue and two profoundly unfair because, you know, there is a, there is a contractual bargain here, a, a relationship. And the idea that the, the one side of that bargain can just sort of walk away because times are difficult and the other doesn't get any compensation just doesn't doesn't seem right but let's let's um move on if if i if i may matt to to what we might call the immediate impact and so looking nationwide and your remit is europe so looking at, at the european market more broadly are we seeing any new trends emerge in the office sector as a result of the pandemic or is it simply too early? I think it's too early to say and even even casting my net you know to our entire sort of global network and, and bringing in the countries in Asia Pacific that have been out you know out of lockdown for you know, nearly three weeks in some cases um, we've seen very little change in, in, in anything other than the behavioral and the density pace point um, so you know companies are choosing not to bring all their staff back to work in most domains because they want to they want to support social distancing or because they have been told by their governments um, I think you know there have been an awful lot of very worthy articles and, and, and guides produced on how you design an office um, to uh, to be you know to, to facilitate social distancing um, 
the problem is going back to my sort of two boxes great idea but we're in the middle of a recession the last thing people want to do is spend money unnecessarily so i think there's a lot of waiting and seeing um, you don't want to dash out and spend a hundred thousand pounds on on refitting your office if it is all over by next spring um, and if, given the toss up between making some redundant redundant and spending that money again it's, it's those difficult conversations i suspect that are taking place um, in boardrooms across across Europe and indeed the world. So I think it's too early to say whether there will be any change. I think the most immediate battle for what is predominantly an urban asset class and in the context of the BCOs membership, you know, big global cities, is just how do you get the cities back to work? Um, you know, the pinch point is not the office. It's actually the public transport system. And, and if the public transport system doesn't facilitate you getting your staff into the office. It doesn't really matter what you do in the office. So I think, you know, coming out of lockdown is going to be considerably more complicated than going into it. And we're not going to see any anything other than those sort of typical recessionary changes in the office market. I think for some time to come, if we're still socially distancing in spring next year and the feedback from our workforces is that you know, this is something that actually is really important to them. I think what you will see first is, is the big, rich global brands embracing it and it, it was notable i saw a comment this week uh, from the former ceo of google saying yeah well obviously we'll we'll take more office space because we want our staff to be happy and, and we want to give them more space um, you know he can do it um, they've got the money it's it's less of a less of an easy call uh, for companies that are struggling in on the margins uh, through this recession so i don't expect to see any significant changes that affect you know how we how you know how we acquire offices how we fit them out until next year and even then I, i'm a relatively firm believer that some companies will say well more of our staff are going to work at home so we need less space and some of them will do the potential sort of google thing of saying well we'll just give our staff more space to make them happy and keep them coming to the office because uh, again you know the office something that you know the bco has, has really led on you know the office is is a home away from home for many people particularly in our sort of crowded world cities it is and I, I, unsurprisingly i'm very reassured by google's statement i would say that wouldn't i as, as perhaps you you would with with landlords matt but um it, it is a home from home for, for many and we will undoubtedly see some some changes I thought the pub, your, your point on public transport was very well made. And I think for many at the moment, that is that is the big question, how they actually get there. I think, as you know, we BCO have put out some guidance on, on the short term, how to make an office work in terms of social distancing and cleanliness and so forth. But actually getting there is going to remain very challenging. It's likely to remain very challenging for many for, for quite some time. But I'd like to jump on to to the opportunity, if, if I may, Matt, in, in, in the time we have remaining. And um, do you think, you know, that the crisis is obviously horrendous in, in so many ways, but trying to look at the positive, does it create an opportunity for the office sector to, to do something constructive and, and to take, take the market forward? Well, I think, you know, there are some things we've been talking about for a very long time and never really cracked. Um, you know, wellness, mental health, physical health in the workplace were things, I suppose, actually relatively new topics. And maybe they were slightly seen as, as you know, nice to have if you're a very, very rich company that can afford it. That it may may just be something that we all pay more attention to as employers and providers of office space. Um, you know, a lot of people wanted to work at home more, but perhaps weren't allowed to. Um, uh, you know, the technology was you know hadn't been tested on a grand scale, and it's now been proven to be more resilient. So I think you know, going back to sort of you know some of the buzzwords we were using before the crisis of you know sort of AWE or uh, alternative working environments. Um, I suspect we will see you know these becoming less of less of an occasional. This company uses it. This doesn't. But something we will we will use more of. Um, I think you know again maybe we will take a long hard look at some of the really old tired things about you know 
the quality and the comfort of workplace, light, heat, temperature, which we've been talking about since the 50s and not really cracked. Perhaps we'll sort of look a bit more closely at some of these and say, well, was packing more and more people into less and less space a good idea for anything other than just you know reducing your rent bill? Um, was hot desking really the best way to look after your staff? Um, I suspect you know there will be some sort of slight behavioural changes that lead to a better working life for people. Um, I'm sure that the office, as it looks and acts, will be much the same as it. You will be recognising the same thing in a year's time as you were saw last year. Well, thank you, Matt. Um, a huge amount there to digest. Uh, sadly, we are out of time, but I do hope, as always, that you've enjoyed this snapshot as much as I have. Uh, that is it from Matt Oakley. Thank you very much again indeed, Matt. It's been a great pleasure to talk to you as always. And from Matt and from me, thank you very much and goodbye. Goodbye.